Hey everyone, welcome back to Cloud Techs Club. I hope you all are doing well. I'm really excited to start a new series with you. This is all about uh, Docker introduction. So Docker is one of the most useful tools in DevOps and we will learn it step by step. In this series, I will help you understand everything from basic concepts to more advanced topics. And yes, we will do lots of hands-on practice as well. Also, I'm working on more courses which are coming soon about AWS, Azure, shell scripting and many more cloud tools. So stay connected with me. This journey will be fun, simple and super helpful for you. Now, let's begin our Docker series and learn something new today. Let's start with universal definition of Docker. So what is Docker? Docker is a containerization tool which helps us creating and managing containers. These containers are lightweight and provide portable environments to run our application. You can think of containers as being similar to virtual machines. Just like how we run virtual machines on platforms like VMware vSphere or Microsoft Hyper-V. Containers also let us run applications within the isolated environments. However, there is a key difference which we will cover in detail later in this lecture. For now, just remember, containers are lightweight, fast and application focused environments. Just like virtual machines, but it is more efficient in comparison to the virtual machines. Before we deep dive into the top words, let's go ahead and understand the container's history first. Now, you might be thinking Docker was the first to introduce containers, but actually it was not. The Linux Foundation was the first who came up with the original idea of OCI. OCI stands for Open Container Initiative. So what is OCI now? So OCI introduced the basic container technology. It gave us the idea that we can run applications inside the containers. So this particular OCI, Open Container Initiative, provides two main specifications. Open Image Specification and Container Runtime Specification. So open image specification is how to build a container image using the file methods. While uh, container runtime specification is for launching the containers using those file methods. Now in market, many third party tools were built using this particular OCI technology. There were many third party communities who used OCI technology, container runtime specification, and created their own engines. So some of these popular tools like Docker Engine, CRIO, Podman, Rocket. Among these, Docker became the most popular one. The Docker community built its own engine called Docker D based on the OCI standards and soon Docker became the go-to tool for creating and running containers within the industry. Now let's take a quick look at how Docker actually creates and runs containers behind the scene. It is simple workflow but super powerful once you understand it. First you start with a physical machine or cloud instance like EC2. So let's have a one server here. Or EC2 instance. On this machine, you install an operating system like Linux. So let's say we have installed an operating system here. OS as Linux. On top of that, 
you install docker engine also known as docker d with the help of docker packages let's say we have installed docker packages here okay so once installed this machine becomes the docker host let me mark this host as docker host here okay now suppose you run the command to create the container let's say a uh, docker container run angelix now what happens when you run a command to create this particular container here docker uses something called container d to do the heavy lifting docker actually provides runtime environment using the container d so let's have a one container d here so container d pulls the required container images from the registry like docker hub or the local or private repository so let's have a repository here container d let me name this repository as either a docker hub or private repository it is not to mark it as local okay so then container d unpack this particular image which it gets from docker hub or a private repository and write the important settings into the json file so what particular settings are written into the json file are like what particular processes are running inside the container how much cpu memory is going to be allocated for this container or storage networking rules so these are the settings which are written within this particular json file then it uses something called run c which is another oci compliant tool and this run c uses the json file to actually start the container so while your container is running run c manages the processes inside it so whatever the process runs inside that particular container are managed by run c so let's have a run c here and let's have few containers let me just change the so we have containers on top of it so every time you run a container this entire process happens in the background this happens very fast and efficiently docker container d and run c work together to give us smooth experience and launch the containers in the background next let's understand why containerization technology was introduced or why do we even need container technology why we can't just stick with traditional approach like traditional servers or like your virtual machines with a virtualization environment let's break it down with the help of a simple uh, picture let's talk about the traditional deployment method so in the past running applications meant 
using standalone servers with traditional approach well that was the whole process followed within it industries previously so you had to manually install the operating system on top of it and then all the required libraries binaries dependencies and finally configure the applications itself but there was a lot of shortcomings with the, the traditional approach first of all complete process you need to follow the manual approach and uh, replicating the same setup on another system was nearly impossible most of the time a lot of hardware just sat around was unused which uh, means lots of uh, wastage of resources within the hardware and uh, when traffic spikes during any sort of an heavy production scaling was tough and uh, expensive as well now then came virtualization with tools like vmware and hyper-v so it was a big step forward now we could run multiple virtual machines on a single physical hardware so but virtual machines had their own set of challenges each vm runs the full operating system so here you can see we have the hardware on top of that we have the operating system so there are basically two types of an uh, hypervisor type 1 and a type 2 so on top of the operating system you can install the hypervisor or if you want you can install directly the hypervisor on top of the hardware and then on top of it we create something called the virtual machines and these virtual machines consist of complete operating system and on top of that we install something called applications so each vm runs the full operating system making it heavy and resource hungry they take time to perform the boot up operations as well memory and disk are often duplicated across virtual machines which uh, again leading to the wasting of resources within the hardware and uh, as your infrastructure scales maintains become very complex and uh, it becomes sometimes slow in nature and also it is leading to the cost within the production environment as you need the licenses for each and every operating system on top of it now to resolve this particular shortcomings of virtualization environment that's where containers came in unlike vms containers don't carry the full operating system they share the host kernel and making them lightweight and fast so what happens on top of the hardware we install the operating system and uh, after installing the operating system on top of that we install something called the docker engine with the help of docker packages and then we create containers and these containers use everything from the docker host operating systems so they start in seconds use fewer resources and are easy to replicate everything your app needs code libraries dependencies is packaged into the single container and it is perfect for cloud native applications microservices and modern devops workflows as well in the last part we talked about the limitations of standalone servers and virtual machines and a little bit about the containers now let's deep dive into the exciting part why containers are better and why the tech world is moving towards them what makes containers super special and uh, what many of the problems containers solve that older systems could not let me explain each point in detail so let's start with the lightweight and uh, sheer host operating system kernel so unlike virtual machines, containers don't carry a full operating system. They use the host operating system kernel, which makes them much lighter. Because there is no operating system to boot, containers can launch in seconds, 
which is perfect and ideal for development, testing and scaling the environments. Containers behave same across the different platforms like development, testing and production environments. You can run multiple containers on a single host without duplication, which saves lots of hardware resources like CPU, RAM, memory and disk as well. Tools like Docker and Kubernetes make it super easy to scale up and scale down automatically the production environments. All right, now that we understand the power of containers, let's talk about something very important. Lightweight images. Why do we need lightweight images? So when you build and run an application, let's say a Node.js application or a Java microservice, it's not just about the code that matters. We also need libraries that your application depends on, binaries for utilities and tools, dependencies for frameworks or drivers, and uh, also we need a runtime environment. For example, JVM, Java Virtual Machine for Java or Node for JavaScript. Now, here is a twist. Different applications may require different versions of these components. It depends on the language in which you are writing the code, the operating system on which it is built, and the compatibility matrix. Managing all of this manually on physical machines or virtual machines is quite messy. So, What's basically the lightweight images? A lightweight image is basically a mini operating system that includes just the components your application needs to run and nothing else. So it's like here is a small container with exactly what my application needs to work. No extra baggage. So what does it typically include? is libraries, binaries, dependencies, and a runtime environment, which is all bundled together inside the image. No unnecessary services, no full operating system, no GUI, just what's the requirement of the application. Now let's go ahead and discuss benefits of using the lightweight images. Since they are small in size, they download and move faster, uh, provides less waiting time. Containers using the lightweight images start in just seconds. That's great for speed. Fewer files inside means a less chance for bugs or security issues. You can run them on any computer with the Docker. It just works the same everywhere. So in short, a lightweight image is like a tailor-made suit for your application. It just fits right and it's super efficient. We will continue with more in the next lecture. Till then, stay connected and keep learning. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel for the latest videos. Stay tuned. Thank you.